awesome. Now you're actually driving power. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm over at Chula Vista Olympic Training Center. And today, I'm gonna to be teaching a clinic. I'm gonna be teaching two clinics, in fact. I'm gonna be teaching a beginner clinic for an hour and then an advanced clinic for an hour. And I'm really looking forward to that, especially with the beginners, because beginners, well, for one, I love teaching fundamentals. I love teaching progressions. In fact, with all my top athletes, I always go back to the fundamentals because that's where it's at. I love uncomplicating things. And with beginners, I can go ahead and translate all the things that I teach my Olympic athletes into those same easy fundamental progressions. Number two, I love teaching beginners because, well, they challenge me in terms of communication, language, okay? So when it comes to communication, we are responsible for the results that we get when it comes to communication. And when it comes to communication, hello. Hi. And when it comes to communication, it's all about getting in rapport with your students, with your riders, with your coach, with your parents. Getting in rapport is key because that is gonna allow you to communicate easily with them. What is getting in rapport? Getting in rapport means that there is a sense of trust, there is a sense of likeness, there is a sense of an even ground that is the same for both of you to talk and communicate. And rapport is key when it comes to teaching. And so if there's a kid who is frustrated, I need to be able to have some kind of flexibility with my communication and get in rapport with the kid and help him identify what's going wrong. But more importantly, have him identify it I don't want to point it out to him because he's already he already knows what he's frustrated with. So I don't want to frustrate him more by just illuminating the fact of what he's already feeling, what he already sees, what he already hears. So what I'm going to do with that is basically work on my ability to let him figure it out because that is what teaching is all about. It's all about helping somebody help them figure out their problems not pointing out problems, helping them to identify them and then solve them. So that is the meaning of communication to me, that is getting rapport. And that's what I love about teaching beginners, especially new ones, because in BMX, it is not easy. I mean, this track here at Chula Vista, it's really, really technical and it's really, really hard. And, and so kids have a hard time mentally getting over the fact that riders may potentially fall. And when they know they can fall, that's when the fears come out. And so it's all about alleviating their potential fears. Let's check out the track. I'm a little bit early. There's a gate. First straight, first turn, second turn, last turn, and the finish line. And then, of course, down there is the, the Beijing replica. Love the Beijing replica. The, me, Mike Day, and Jill Kittner came here. We were the first BMXers to be here as a team to break ground, help break ground of Olympic BMX racing as we know it here in America. One of the run, a segment as Coach G. Roll the tape. Stay focused, get ready now. For real, get ready now. Nitro with the nice flow. Stay focused, get ready now. For real, get ready now. Let's go. Stay focused, in the heat come. Concentrate to the sound of the beat drum. Start it up, take it back now. Check, check it out. This is how it's going down. Yeah. All right, man, I'm back from the track. It has been a long day. I've been going for about I've been going for about 12 hours and my dog is jumping into a bag. Hey, get out of that bag. She always thinks there's like groceries for her. Anyways, just getting back from the track. I wish I could have answered the questions back there, but it just got too dark and I got hungry and I'm gonna knock out some of these questions that a lot of you guys have taken the time to ask on Instagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with Joe Bud88. Joe Bud asked, I had a wooden stumpy gate 
for a while, I had to pull myself back for the gate to drop, right? And now I'm stuck in that same motion, leaving me catching up from the start. Any tips? Yes, absolutely. So what you need to do is you can start off and reconfigure your start to where you don't pull back by simply doing a box sprint. And what you want to do is just focus on leading with the head and shoulders moving forward as your first movement. So you have to reconfigure your first movement, man. Basically what the box sprint will do, it'll prevent you from moving the bike backwards because the rear pedal is on a box. So it's gonna force you to move forward as your first movement. So what we need to do is reconfigure and rewrite the software of you pulling back. So let's try that first. Let me know how it goes. Let's move on to the next question. Thank you very much and good luck. This one is from Pipe LD. His question is, what is the appropriate height of handlebars? It's very preferential, you know, Obviously you want to find a happy medium and here's the deal. You're going to find that if you're hunched over at the waist, the handlebars are too low and you might find that the handlebars are too high if the bike is coming up too easily. So it really comes down to a preference, it comes down to how tall you are. There's no set in stone what height handlebar you should have. Everything for the most part is a personal preference. It's all about finding something that's a happy medium for you and your style and where you're at. The next question is from Vagard. Val, Vegard Val, what is the perfect race food during race and before? That is such an open-ended question. What's perfect? What's perfect is, number one, that you eat in the first place, right? Number two, what's perfect is that you eat during your race event. And believe it or not, a lot of guys do not even do that. And I think it's important that you show up to the race making sure that you have a meal digested 30 minutes prior to getting on your bike. Now, what does that meal consist of? Usually it consists of a balanced meal of carbohydrates, protein, and some vegetables. Or carbohydrates, protein, and fat. What are you eating regularly on a day-to-day -day basis? What are you eating regularly before you train if that's working for you, you might want to stick with that. Now, in terms of what you should eat while you're racing, while you're training, I really think it comes down to simple sugars. For me, I like drinks with simple sugars. I need electrolytes. I need amino acids in my drink. That way it, it prevents muscle protein breakdown. That's my hydration mix. As for food, again, I like simple sugar, so I like gels, I like bananas, anything that I can chew on and consume easily in terms of digestibility, that's gonna work well for me. And you may find what works for you. Here's a question from Bryce Light Brown. How far should I sprint? Thank you, Bryce, that's a great question. How far should you sprint? It depends on what you're working on. Are you working on your acceleration to the first jump? Are you working on your top end leg speed? Are you working on your fitness? How far you should sprint is all going to depend on what you want to achieve most. And the one thing that I suggest that you do is that you focus on one area of what you want to improve on. Like, look, you're not going to be able to work on acceleration out of the gate and try to make that an interval workout to where it improves your track speed at the same time. So I find that it's best for every athlete, any athlete, to continuously go deep into what they want to improve upon. And just focus on that, go deep into it, and reprogram what you need. It's really that simple. Now, as it pertains to like acceleration and short sprints, you might want to keep it specific to the first jump. If you're looking for like fitness and top end leg speed all the way down to the second turn, then you might want to lengthen that sprint and maybe go 10, 15 seconds long. Whatever you do, make sure you go deep with it and stick with that energy system and that specificity. Mixed training gives you mixed results, so go deep with it. This question is from JackMCC underscore 15. Coming up to any type of jump, where should you have your body position to either jump or manual? Great question, Jack, thank you so much. The position that I suggest is being in an attack position to where your elbows are slightly bent, your knees are bent, your hips are pushed back, and you're ready to either jump or manual. That's an attack position. Pedals need to be level, and you're basically ready to absorb the lip of the jump and be able to jump or manual. That's gonna be the appropriate position, what I would call an attack position. Ricky Nico's dad asked, I need to work on my gait stance and speed. What do you recommend, coach? What do I recommend for a gate start stance is having everything neutral to where you're really comfortable from the feet to the head all the way to the handlebars. So let's start with the feet. Cranks need to be relatively level. The pedals need to be level. 
even pressure between the front and rear foot and then make sure that the core is tight. You're standing nice and tall with a nice bend at the hips and a bend at the knee, not too straight, but not too flexed either. Uh, arms can be slightly bent at the elbow. You don't want them locked out, but you don't want them fully bent either. And then make sure that your wrists are forward. That way, when you get into the acceleration position, your wrists are in the proper position. So those are the components to ensure that you have a proper stance with your gait start. Thank you so much. I think that's about it for now with Ask Coach G. If you guys have any more questions, Feel free to ask them below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. If you guys can, make sure you guys check out bmxtrain.com where I have loads of information on everything from gate start secrets, sprinting, training, mental training, jumps, manualing, anything you want to learn as well as I have training plans specific for the first straight, track fitness, older guy fitness, off season fitness, make sure you guys check it out, bmxtraining.com, become a member now. Also, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel by clicking on the BMX training icon right here. Thank you so much. Until next time, I'll see you at the races.